Hello. Uh, so hello. today we're doing another video with a scientist called Fr Dr. Fred Richards. Make sure you leave a like and follow. Okay. Uh, so the first question, could you explain what a geologist is? So a geologist is someone who tries to understand from the record of rocks we have uh, on the Earth's surface, what the history of the Earth has been. So how tectonic plates have moved around through time, how Earth's climate has changed over time, and how the planet um, evolved um, since it formed in the solar system four and a half billion years ago. Thank you. Have you ever been to a volcano in person? Yeah, I have actually. Um, I have a chance to go to two actually. Uh, I've been to Etna, which is uh, in Sicily, so an island just off the um, south of Italy, uh, and also another one called Stromboli, which is erupting all the time actually at the moment, and that as well is just north of um, Sicily. Oh, what happens if you break a rock? If you break a rock? Um, so I guess one example of rocks breaking in quite spectacular fashion is when you have earthquakes. So no, in this like case, you guys yeah. break a rare rock. If we break a rock. Yeah, like a rare one. A rare one. Yeah. Uh, what happens? Uh, you make it less valuable <laughs> um, by cutting it into smaller chunks. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of what happens, you just end up with two or three smaller pieces of rock from that original piece. What made you want to become a geologist? <laughs> Um, so I think for me, it was, I was really into rock climbing. So I spent a lot of time kind of climbing mountains, looking at these amazing landscapes and thinking, how did this come to be? How were these landscapes formed? And that was really the thing that got me to start to think about uh, geological processes and how rocks form over long time periods. And so that was really the thing that sparked my interest. And also just the fact that you get to travel to some amazing places uh, to do field work. So been to the Bahamas to sample ancient coral reefs, uh, Madagascar. Um, and so that ability to go out into the field and do science is really exciting as well. Um, is there any pros and cons about your job or with your job? I'd say the pros are that essentially I get to do what I love every day. Um, I get to follow what interests me, get to research interesting things and try and develop new knowledge. And that's really exciting to me. Um, the cons, I guess, are that, um, it can be quite tough to get funding sometimes. So you're always kind of having to look for the next funding opportunity and contracts can be quite short. Uh, but once you become a full-time professor, then that's a bit easier. Um, and yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say there are that many cons to be honest. I guess one thing that people sometimes find hard is because you're doing all the work and it's quite individual, um, you've got to have very good kind of time management to make sure you get things done because there's sort of no pressure with having a boss telling you what to do. Um, so it can be kind of quite open-ended, but as long as you've got, you know, a good group of people around you um, and some good students to work with, it's, yeah, it's really fun. Now, this question is not for me, but have you ever fell in a volcano? <laughs> no, I haven't fallen into one, luckily. Uh, otherwise, I probably wouldn't be here speaking to you. Um, but yeah, I've, I've climbed up some, but never actually fallen in, luckily. What do you enjoy the most about science? I think it's just the excitement of discovering something that no one else knew about before. Um, so creating new knowledge is really exciting. And then also I think what's nice about it is just the ability, the, the, what comes with science where you discuss ideas and you learn from each other. And there's this brilliant community um, who all kind of have different ideas about how things work. And sometimes the debate can get quite heated um, but I think you learn a lot from each other that way. And it's just amazing how international it is, you know, people from all over the world um, with different perspectives. And that's, yeah, it's an exciting place to be. Um, what inspires you along your journeys? Sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry. Um, what inspires you along your journeys? Um, what inspires me, I guess. So uh, the science I'm trying to do at the moment is uh, what I'm mainly focusing on is trying to understand how high sea level was in the past, uh, so we have a better idea of what's going to happen in the future. Um, and I'm interested in this kind of research because I think it has a direct impact on, for example, people who live on the coasts. Um, so at the moment, we don't really know with that much certainty exactly how rapidly sea level will rise and 
when people who live near the coast are going to have to move inland or potentially even abandon their homes. And so I'm working really hard to try and um, put some better uh, forecasts together for how rapidly sea level is going to change. And that, that, that's a big motivator for me is trying to help uh, coastal communities. Uh, and I think just more generally, it's just, yeah, I'm always pushed by this desire to find out things. It's just pure curiosity. I want to understand better how the world works. And that's what drives me forward every day. What's your most rarest find? Ooh, rarest find. In terms of what, so <laughs> probably one of the rarest things I found is uh, in some ancient rocks I was looking at, which are from the Cambrian period. So this is about 600 million years ago. Um, we were able to find some really ancient fossils uh, of these things called uh, trilobites. Um, and they're super rare, this particular species. So that's probably the coolest thing I found is one of these ancient trilobites. They're kind of like, almost like if you've seen what a dust mite looks like, but they live in the sea instead, or they lived in the sea, they're now extinct. Um, and yeah, I found sort of one that was about sort of fist size in this old rock, which was pretty cool. So what did you have to achieve in like GCSE or A-level to be in a position that you are in today? So GCSE and A-levels, um, you have to have pretty good GCSE and A-levels, but there's no kind of set bar for GCSEs. In terms of A-levels, so I went to Oxford University, and so to get into that course, uh, you need to have um, three A's at A-level when I was doing it. Um, and you normally have to do maths as one of them. Um, but it depends. So other courses have different entry requirements. Um, and I'd say basically, if you have some interest in science, but also interest in the natural world and geography, for example, then it's a really good course to try and explore. If you had a chance to become anything in the world, would you take it? Become anything in the world? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I guess for me, the dream would be just to be a, sort of a well-known scientist who gets to also sort of speak not just at scientific conferences for example but also try and inspire the next generation and talk at kind of big public meetings as well um and be a sort of spokesperson for the kind of research that i do um do we have any more questions from the floor because i think we've finished the questions that you guys have pre-prepared um i might have one um what's the what? highest mountain slash volcano you have climbed oh highest mountain i've climbed uh it's so the highest mountain I've climbed is probably um yeah that'll be Monte Rosa in Italy so it's quite close to the height of Mont Blanc so about 4,200 meters is the highest mountain I've climbed uh volcano wise I've been to the top of Etna which I can't actually remember how high that is but I think it's sort of 1,500 meters or something like that um but yeah those are the highest mountains of volcanoes I've climbed so being a scientist is like a really good job and I wanted to know like what is the pay like? Yeah so the pay is pretty good I mean it depends exactly uh, what level you're at but um, you know if you're living in London and you're sort of a professor then it's pretty uh, competitive so above £50,000 uh, per year but then also you can as a scientist as well as your pay that you get um, just for your research job quite often what people do is they do a bit of consultancy on the side so they advise companies who are interested in a particular scientific method for example so you can also make quite a lot of extra money uh, that way so the kind of base salary is sort of pretty good but then you can also make quite a lot on top by um if you're doing work that's of interest to companies for example as well um, by consulting with them um do you ever um have you ever thought of climbing mount everest i have thought of climbing mount everest but yeah never actually got around to it I did something really crazy though. So last week um, on this bike, I basically went up and down a hill so many times that I climbed the equivalent height of Mount Everest just to do as a challenge with one of my friends. So I've, I've climbed the height of Mount Everest on my bike, but I haven't actually climbed the actual mountain. Uh, but maybe one day I'll do that. Are there any more questions? Otherwise I've got a question. Cool. Um, what's your favorite rock, Fred? Ooh, favorite rock. I'm going to be really controversial and say ice. Some people are like, ice isn't a rock, but technically it is a rock because a rock is just a combination of minerals and solid water is a mineral. So I'm going to say ice because I'm really fascinated by ice and I'm interested in how stable ice sheets are and what it's going to do to sea level in the future. 
but yeah controversial some people would say ice isn't a rock but i say it is i like that bringing controversy into geology yeah, yeah. It seems like you travel a lot. So, like, I wanted to know, like, how many countries have you been to and which one's, like, your favourite country? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, how many countries I've been to? I probably, I've never actually counted them up, but probably over 50. Um, favourite country I've ever been to? I think the one that I enjoyed visiting the most just because it was so different to anywhere else I'd been and the people were so lovely and it was just so beautiful was probably Madagascar. That was really cool. Um, they've got some troubles there, of course, um, but yeah, just a really beautiful country and just really lovely people as well. Really enjoyed that place. A further like, question, travelling can cost up to like a lot of money. So is this like, all paid for like, when you travel and everything? <laughs> Yeah, so normally when you're traveling as a scientist to do research or to go to a conference, for example, to talk to other scientists, normally your um, your university will pay for that or you apply for money um, from a research council, for example, to, to pay to do that research. Um, so, yeah, you never pay out of your own pocket normally, as long as you're doing it for your own work. Uh, this was a question from me. Uh, have you seen any exotic animals while you've been on holiday? Ooh, yeah, definitely. So I've seen a lot of snakes. Uh, I actually saw some, the craziest thing I've probably seen is whale sharks. So at one point we were doing some field work in Western Australia and we were swimming on this reef and you could actually, there were actually whale sharks um, in the water off the coast there. So that was pretty, pretty amazing because they're enormous, like the biggest, biggest fish in the sea. Have you, have you ever went gliding down a mountain? Gliding? Yes. Uh, I think... I'm not necessarily sure I know what you mean by gliding, but do you mean like hang gliding? Uh, yeah, or those wingsuit things. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't. I really want to, though. <laughs> it looks really yeah. cool. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, I was going to ask Fred if you could round us off with maybe some words of inspiration for school kids at the moment who might want to go into science in the future. Well, I'd say, you know, if you're curious and you want to understand how the world works, um, then I think science is, you know, an amazing thing to pursue. Uh, it's such an exciting job. You get to discover new things every day. You get to do something that you're passionate about. Uh, to some extent, when you become a research scientist, you, you know, you're your own boss as well. So um, you can, you know, pursue whatever interests you. And in that sense, I don't think there's a better job than that. Um, so if you're interested in science, um, if you're getting good grades in it, then I really urge you to do something scientific um, at university if that interests you. And then, yeah, see, see where it goes from there, because it's a really, really rewarding career. Awesome. Thank you. And um, if there are any more questions, I'm just going to leave like a couple of seconds of silence. Okay. Thank uh, you. Oh, I was going to ask one. Oh, wait. Okay, oh, yeah. We've got one more. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, earthquakes. Have, how deep have you seen one? Or... You can't. Bruh. Like, so, yeah. so we can't see earthquakes directly, um, but what we can do is we can measure how long it takes the sound waves that they generate uh, to reach things called seismometers on Earth's surface, which kind of measure how much the Earth's surface is vibrating up and down. And so if you use those sound waves, you can actually work out where the earthquake was generated within the Earth. Um, and so the deepest ones we've ever seen are at 700 kilometers down within the earth so kind of quite close to the core actually um, so they can be really really deep in places like um, underneath japan for example but normally they're more like 15 kilometers deep but still yeah there's a big range but 700 kilometers is the deepest one all right awesome any more questions no nope, i think we're all good thank you so much fred and like I'm nice sure have other thank questions. you thank you all right thanks nice, guys i really enjoyed answering your questions and good luck with whatever you choose to do later on <laughs> You too, I guess. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Oh, see?